Good, how are you? Holy shit. Um, should I write my name to go to the bathroom just in case I don't get back in time? You can. You still need to be back on time. Why are you tardy? Run. Yes. Christian, run. Yes, run. Go, go. Go, go. Yes, French. You it's need to go. You don't be sitting around for two well, minutes. Well, I like, you know, I just got the... Dude, you have three minutes now. Another function. That's so real. That is a real image. That definitely gives off gangsta Spongebob images from 2009. Feels. Okay. You may not have gotten the same one, you realize. Everybody got the same one. Oh, everyone gets the same one. Here's the thing. Mr. Pod just goes, all right, how many... There's usually two forms, at least. There's usually two forms. Not for A-plus. It's the same one. It's not. Like, everyone got, like, the evaluate to the extent that they can get it. Yeah, like, they can get it. Yeah, they can get it. How that how the definition oh, of totally citizens should change from like eighteen forty to like what? eighteen or nineteen thirty something? How do you make a t-shirt? What? Diego? What? I'm talking about the DQ from Pardue. Pardue? 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 What about it? Well, we don't even know what. What is it? What's the deal? What's the major? Wait, did you see Cole's post? Did you see Cole's post, Cole Rogers, on Instagram? Can you please comment something mean? Please. Are you like asking people to just go out and bully people? We're all messing with them, and that'd be amazing if you did that. Okay, I need to get y'all started here. So last class, you got several handouts, which all come together to make up 115. And I think we made it through about question number six on Friday. But I need you to confirm that once you have that out. If you were not here on Friday and you didn't come by and pick up the handouts and you didn't print them out yourself, I left them on the front table up there for you. All right, so while you guys figure that out, today we've got one full class period where we don't need to worry about anything except for rational functions. So on our front page here, we've got all of our notes that we took. So 
how to find x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, and holes. We looked at that one the day before last class as well. Talked about y-intercepts, you plug in 0 for x and solve for y. The three rules you have to check for horizontal asymptotes, when you would have a slant asymptote, and how to find it, and how to go about describing domain. So we did all of that in good detail. And if my notes are correct, I didn't do this in the incorrect spot. I believe you did question six at the end of the last class. Is that correct? Uh, no. Number six is not the last one you have done? Oh, yes. Okay. So since you should have this one finished already, I'm going to go through number six, but fairly quickly. So this way you've got a little bit of a check to make sure that you agree with what I'm doing. Give us a good chance to, or give you a good chance to go ahead and speak up on any of these that uh, are not immediately um, coming to you. And then we will practice some more of these together and then I'll leave the last couple of them for you to do. Okay, so again, um, when, so I'm gonna go over this one for you to check, which you should already have it done. Then I'm gonna go over Number seven, as one more uh, reteach, just to kind of jog your memory. And then, but then once you get to question eight, again, I think you should start off with the parts that you feel most comfortable with. So I would say for a lot of people, y intercept is going to be one of the easiest things. Plug in zero for x and solve. And it looks like it would be one fourth. So that's going to be a point for our table and for our chart. For these three, these are the ones that we started practicing two classes ago. These require you to know what numbers make the numerator zero and the denominator zero. So sometimes that means you've got to do some factoring. Sometimes you don't. For this question, you didn't need to factor the numerator, but you probably wanted to factor the denominator. If you have a number that makes both the numerator and the denominator zero, it's a whole. If you've got a number that makes just the numerator zero, it's an x-intercept, which is gonna give us another point for our table and our chart. And if you have a number that makes just the denominator zero, that's a vertical asymptote. Now, I think as we go through these, you can see that um, you do have to know a lot of stuff. You have to know what all of these things are, what they look like, and how to find them. So there's a little bit of a hurdle there. But once you kind of know what you're looking for, you can see that I answered four of these questions with really about two steps of work. Very little work needed, but you have to know what you're doing. OK, domain's a little bit easier to see once the graph is done, so I tend to do that at the end. Horizontal asymptotes is the one you need to compare the degrees of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, there's no horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the denominator is bigger, it's zero. And if the degrees are equal, it is y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So in this question, negative one fourth. And then slant asymptote is the one that's gonna take the longest. You have to do long division and your equation will be y equals whatever the quotient is, ignore the remainder, but only if the degree of the numerator is one bigger than the degree of the denominator. Since that's not the case here, that should be about a two second question. Now, when we put these points, or when you put these points, because you should have already done this, when you put these points on your graph, and you graph the asymptotes as some dashed lines. Asymptotes always go in as dashed lines. We saw a couple different things happen. One is you may not be confident and you may just not have enough points yet. You're always encouraged to plug in more points. Don't plug in x equals 10. That's gonna be hard to compute without a calculator, but you could plug in one pretty easily. You could plug in negative two, negative one fairly easily. But sometimes, like this question, we don't even need it if we remember how the graph behaves around the asymptotes. So horizontal and slant asymptotes, the only thing they tell you is what the graph approaches at the ends of the graph. So it gets close to it on the far right and the far left. Based on this guy's direction, 
vertical asymptotes, it always goes to infinity on one side and negative infinity on the other side. And again, it's got to approach the horizontal asymptote on the left. So I don't know that we needed any more points for that one, but that's why your graph should have looked like that for number six. So since you already did that one, I am ready to move on unless y'all immediately have any questions. Yes? Can you help with slant asymptote on number eight? No, we're not on number eight yet. Oh, okay. Just skip that part if that's where you're at. My bad. Thank you. Any questions about six? Yes? Domain? Oh, yeah, yeah, domain, sorry. So domain, we need to describe all the x values that the graph does hit. So I can see it hits all of these from the far left until you get to negative four. So negative infinity to negative four. And then it hits all of these, which is negative four forever to the right. So that would be your domain. Long way to say you can't plug in negative four. Other questions? Okay, so I'm basically going to be saying the same things again. The definition of these things and the approach to each of these things isn't changing. You just need enough repetition that these sink in. So this would be the only one that I do for you today because I did several for you last class. Um, but on seven, all you have to do is follow along. So if I just did these in the order that I would do them, I would probably plug in zero for x to find my y-intercept. And if I do that, what is my y-intercept going to be? Negative two-thirds. Or negative four-six, but that reduces. So we saw from the last question, we don't need a ton of points to know what our graph looks like. So any points we can get is welcome. OK, for these three, I need to know what numbers make the numerator 0 and the denominator. The numerator is already factored, so it's ready to go. But the denominator probably needs to be factored. Numbers that make both the numerator and denominator 0 give you a whole. Numbers that make just the numerator 0 give you x-intercepts, so there's another point. And numbers that make just the denominator 0 give you vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are vertical lines, so this x equals is important. It is required. Okay, horizontal asymptotes, you got to compare the degrees. The degree of the bottom is bigger, it's 0. The degree of the numerator is bigger, it doesn't exist. And if the degrees are equal, it will be y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient, so negative one-half. Try to highlight that to help you see where that's coming from. And then this one doesn't have a slant asymptote. How do I know it doesn't have a slant asymptote? Because it has a horizontal asymptote. That's true. If it has a horizontal asymptote, it can't have a slant asymptote. But it could have neither. So when is it going to have a slant asymptote? Perfect. Degree of the numerator has to be one bigger than the degree of the denominator. So after you find those things, plot your points that you've got, x and y intercepts, plot your vertical asymptotes as dashed lines, plot your, graph your horizontal asymptotes as dashed lines, graph your slant asymptotes as dashed lines, all asymptotes dashed lines. And now, again, more points is always better. Do I have enough points on this one, though? Yes. OK, how come? If I know it hits this point, what's going to happen to the right? It's going to keep going closer and closer. Closer to what? To the asymptote. Right. Horizontal asymptote, it has to approach on the far right and the far left. And then based on, we can see this direction, it tells me it's going up. And based on this direction, it tells me it's going down. And again, those asymptotes, if you know how it interacts around those, you can often save yourself from plotting a, a ton of points like your calculator has to do. OK, and then we hit all of these x values from negative infinity to negative 3. 
and then we hit all of these x values from negative 3 to infinity. Okay, any specific part of number 7 jumping out at you as being more difficult that you want to ask a specific question on? Want me to say the directions again? Anything like that? Okay, then I would like you to try question 8. And unfortunately, we still don't have our classroom calculators. Um, they use those for AP testing. So while you work this question, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to graph it on the board for us to see. Because this is what I would normally make all of my students do. And we will use it as a way to check the majority of our work. But we'll talk about how to do that in a minute. So as you finish question 8, that does not look right. As you finish question 8, see if your graph looks the same as the calculator's graph. And if it doesn't, it should maybe be giving you some hints on what to try again. What I mean by that is the graph looks like it has two x-intercepts. So if you think it only had one x-intercept, then something about that work needs to be revisited. But I will give you about six minutes to do your best on question 8. So. Put in a good effort. It's not uh, not a rush.
Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at question eight. So again, if your graph looks similar to my graph, that's going to check most of the stuff for you. It doesn't check everything though. You could still have messed up the domain. There could, there is a slant asymptote right here and your equation could be a little bit off, but where it still looks kind of close. And I think this one, this one has a hole in it, I think. Which again, your calculator does not do a good job of showing that to you. Now, it knows that there's a hole there, but until you do the work, um, it's hard to know that. So this checks most of it. So I'd say if that looks good and you feel confident about your answer for hole and domain and slant asymptote, then I guess you can go ahead and move on to question nine. But if you are not sure, then let's look at this together. So let me start with some of the ones I think are easier and I'll go pretty quickly on those. Plug in zero for x and solve for y is how you find y-intercept. You end up with zero divided by negative nine. Um, this guy needs to be factored. Oops. And the numerator had a GCF and a difference of two squares. Things can factor more than once. The denominator also has a GCF. And then a trinomial. And I made a real careless mistake on this this morning in zero hour. And then I basically had to redo the whole question. So try to learn from my mistake here. Don't go so fast on the factoring that you make careless mistakes and have to start over. But it looks like the numerator equals zero at zero negative 3 and 3. And the denominator equals 0 at 3 and negative 1. Notice this 3 doesn't affect that. The x does. x equals 0 at 0. 3 doesn't ever equal 0. That's why it doesn't give me 1. So you have to consider those things, but sometimes they give you something, sometimes they don't. So all of that to see that negative 1 makes just a denominator 0. So I think there should be 1 vertical spike in this graph. 0 and 3 make only the numerator 0. Why should I have known this one? Right, the origin is not just an x-intercept, it's also a y-intercept. So it's good to see that that's consistent. But it looks like uh, positive, oh wait, did I say positive 3? This should be negative 3, right? Okay, it looks like positive three makes the numerator and denominator zero, so that's the x value of the whole. Again, even if we let you have a calculator, you would not get this question correct because you are not gonna see it, bless you. Have to work this by hand, it's the only way to get this. Now, I'm gonna highlight this, and I've been warning y'all, this tends to be one of the few things on our next test that students struggle with. And the problem is just that you don't get to practice at every question. You have to do three or four questions before one of them has a hole. You don't plug it into the function, you're gonna get zero over zero. You don't plug it into the factored form, you get zero over zero. You have to plug it into the reduced fraction form. You need this stuff to cancel so that you don't end up with uh, zero over zero. So after you cancel these, you are left with three times six over three times four, which reduces to divide by six, divide by six, three over two. Okay with that? Now again, we have no intentions of giving you a calculator because there's too much that the calculator will just do for you. But I know you guys also are interested in like ACT type stuff. Um, so let me show you real quick on the calculator. If I do trace three enter, it realizes that there's no Y value that exists for X equals three, that's a good sign. If you move your cursor a little bit to the left of three, you can see Y is close to about what? 
Okay, and if you move it to the right of three just a little bit, it's around. And we just said that it is three over two, one point five. So that makes sense. Those decimals are near where I expect it to be. Now again, just because your graph is right doesn't mean this is right. That's one of the things that you can't check by just skimming it. Okay, horizontal asymptotes. It doesn't have one because the degree of the numerator is bigger. Because the degree is one bigger than the degree of the denominator, it takes two seconds to know there's a slant asymptote. But to find the equation of the slant asymptote, unfortunately, this is where we have to do some long division. So I'll go through this part pretty quickly, but then I'll give you all a chance to ask questions here. So multiply these. Change the signs and add. Got these x squared. These are x's so they can combine. Do the same thing again. And then what can I multiply by 3x squared to get 2x squared? Get 2 thirds. Multiplying by 1 third, divide by divides by 3, which would make it a 1. So if you want it to be a 2, you need to multiply it by 2. So that gives me this. This would be negative 4x and negative 6, I believe. I don't know, but I also don't care. I could see that I was close enough to the remainder that if I did have a careless mistake, it doesn't matter because that does not affect the slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote equation was one third x plus two thirds. I think I may have mentioned this on Friday, but usually these don't deal with fractions, but it's good for you to practice with fractions anyway. All right, like all of our graphs, we know some points, so we can throw those on a graph. Uh, the hole is not really a, a point on the graph, but you are expected to show it as an open circle. Just because your calculator does a bad job doesn't mean that we need to do a bad job with it. We've got some asymptotes, like x equals 1, but also y equals 1 third x plus 2 thirds. So this is in mx plus b format. We've got a y-intercept. We've got a slope. asymptote, so dashed line, and I think we are ready to graph it now. So even though it doesn't hit this point, it's going to hit the points right before it and right after it. It's got to hit this point. So based on this guy's direction, this is why it's going down on this side and up on this side, which is good because that's how it's going to hit this point. Usually if you have one or two things wrong, usually your graph feels really difficult to construct because you get some conflicting information. Everything needs to fit together nicely if all of your stuff is right. And then just like horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes will tell you what the graph approaches on the far left and the far right. So this matched up to this. In fact, I'll even change the window settings match up with our grid and then it should look even closer and it's not going to be 100 percent accurate because your calculator is plotting hundreds of points but it should be pretty close considering we only spent a couple minutes on it. okay and then last part would be domain. And I will say for domain, I think uh, even if you're feeling pretty confident here, this is an easy one to miss. You hit all of these x values, negative infinity to negative 1, and then what's the next interval? Negative 1 to what? 
infinity. Not to infinity. And that's what I'm concerned oh, about. X equals 3 can exist. So we have to do this as his own interval, negative 1 to 3, and then 3 to infinity. Domain doesn't care why you can't plug those numbers in, just that you can't. Negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. X equals 3 is a whole. But neither one of them exists in the domain, so they both have to be taken out. And that's easy to skip. Again, because not every question has a whole, it doesn't make you think about this in every question. So, Okay, so more important than the practice, more important than listening to me going over it, if you guys need to ask some questions, then this would be your chance. They're only going to get easier if you understand what you should be doing. I'm not going to beat you over the head about it today, but I really think as we go over questions and you realize that you made a mistake or you misread something or you misunderstood something, go back to this box on the first page, erase what I had you write down, reword it, make it more detailed, put this example out to the side, do whatever you need to do so that everything you have to know from this section actually two sections this is actually two six and two seven but all of it would be in one spot so you have one quick place to review as needed okay anything you want to ask about number eight okay then starting with question nine what I'm gonna do is I will graph it up here for you give you five to seven minutes like questions where you have to do the long division I know you're gonna need longer questions where you don't should need as long but in number nine this is what your graph is supposed to look like so again try to learn don't use this as a way to get the answers, but like after you get your x-intercepts answers, if you don't have two answers there, then you need to retry your work. If you don't get a y-intercept at zero, then you need to reconsider your work. But I'll give you enough time to try that, and then I'll give you a chance to speak up and I will work any and all parts of nine if we need to. But at this point you should kind of know what your weaknesses are and you should start to be able to kind of move on at your own pace I hope. Plus what we don't get to in class today I will need you to do for homework between now and Wednesday so please uh, stay on top of it the best you can.
I do, yes. Um, do you think that I could come take the quiz during that? Because it's my study hall period. Um, yes, that would be fine. Okay, on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Hey. How was it? Uh, it was actually it was pretty decent. Easy five, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, light work. On okay. Wait, you're not gonna be here tomorrow? No, I got Oh, okay. Good luck. students had their AP test today. but you need to check your work. Yeah, you uh, Oh, man. Um, you know how you told me that I didn't do one of the questions on the homework? Okay. Uh, and I showed it to you? No, I don't remember. Just show it to me later. Okay. No, it's not a good time. Okay, was this uh, question nine, I think? Okay, so what parts of question nine would you like me to go over with you to help you get that graph? I will assist y'all in doing it. What'd you get for the y-intercept? Zero. Okay, I agree. Plug in zero for x, solve for y. Um, I have to factor this real quick to have an idea of what's going on. Okay, does your factoring look like that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what do you think your x intercepts are then? Okay, I agree. The two numbers that make just a numerator zero. What about vertical asymptotes? Okay, x equals on both of those, I'm assuming. Those are the number that make only the denominator zero. No number makes the numerator and denominator zero.
Okay, what'd you get for horizontal asymptote? Okay, degrees are the same, so leading coefficient over leading coefficient, three over one. It doesn't have a slant asymptote because the degree of the numerator is not one bigger than the degree of the denominator. The domain is gonna have you take out anything that's division by zero, whether that's a whole or a vertical asymptote. Always put the smaller number on the left. Is that what you got for domain? You need to skip negative one. So this means take numbers less than negative one. This means take numbers bigger than negative one. That's the same thing as saying skip it. Okay. Then it might be an easy fix. So plot your y-intercept. Plot your two x-intercepts. And you have these two spots. Luke, you want to put your chair down? You're making me nervous. I know someone that busted their head open doing that. So, okay, vertical asymptotes as dashed lines. You should have a vertical spike in your graph at x equals negative one and x equals three and an asymptote at y equals three. You've got all that on your graph? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then we'll go back and add more points if we need to, but one thing that you should be sure of, because there's a horizontal or a slant asymptote, you should know that your graph is going to try to approach it on the right. Based on this direction, it must, this must be going down to negative infinity, which means this side is going to positive infinity. Now, here's where I think plugging in some more points might be beneficial to you. If, if you're not sure how you're supposed to hit this point and be coming up here, you could plug in x equals one to find the y value, plug in x equals two to find the y value. But I think sometimes what throws you off on this is that you think that you can't cross this. And that's not true. You can cross a horizontal asymptote. You can cross a slant asymptote. All of those things tell you is what you approach on the far right and far left of the graph. But if your graph has a middle section like this, it can cross it and then this goes to negative infinity, this goes to positive infinity, and that's why the graph looks like that. You can cross a horizontal asymptote and you can cross a slant asymptote, but only if your graph has at least three sections and sometimes it crosses in the middle, sometimes it doesn't. That's where you might need to find more points. Why? Well, the only reason a graph can't cross the vertical asymptotes is because a function, you only get one shot at each x value. So if x can't be three, there's no other time that x can be three. For horizontal and slant asymptotes, they really just help you with the end behavior. They tell me what's happening at the ends of the graph, but in the middle of the graph, it's still fair game. So it can still, it can still cross that if there's at least three sections. But again, if that bugs you, and if that feels like you're not doing something right, you can take a second, get an extra point, plug in x equals one, maybe. And nine fourths is about two and a fourth. So right about here. And if you make yourself plot some more of these points here, you can kind of, you'll feel better about why it goes that direction. That's why I say more points is always better. All right. If you've not moved on to question 10, let's, yeah, what you got? And so you said if you cross the horizontal it has to be in the middle section. Okay. Like, 
this doesn't match up with this graph. But let's say that there was only one vertical asymptote and the graph looks like this. If there is a horizontal here, since it can only approach on the far right and only approach on the far left, if there's not like a middle section, then it shouldn't be crossing it. Mm -hmm. But if there's something like this, then it could be going through it in the middle and still be consistent with everything else. So there is a point where it crosses. Mm -hmm. Like there's a point there. I'm just where making I'm just making up a thing. I don't know. In question nine, yes. But yeah, question nine. There is a point where it crosses the horizontal asymptote. It, like yes. Okay. Somewhere around one, two, three, somewhere in here. Okay. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to have our calculator graph number ten, and then let that guide some of your work. But on that question nine that y'all asked, that you said your graph just looked a lot different, was it just that? I just didn't graph it right yet. I didn't have it cross the horizontal asymptote. Didn't it make it feel like the rest of your graph, didn't it feel like something was wrong though? It did, but I yeah. didn't really know why. Okay, this is what we're aiming for on question 10. So let me give you a few minutes to Give it a shot. And then we can talk about any parts we need to. All of it if we need to also. But as you get stuck, try to use your notes on the front page. And if you're really stuck before I'm ready to move on, then just start the next question and do the parts you're more comfortable with. Like last year, the baseline was better than this. Like last year, the baseline was better than this. 
expect that the last year's baseline was way better. Yeah, the last year's baseline though, Jackson. Um, got two problems left. <laughs> Sorry, I was. I was literally just doing work on the because of two problems. And then what you just said 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Didn't you say the same thing 10 minutes ago? I said one more uh, page. So that's four problems. Okay, that's been five minutes for this one. I think this is number 10. Any parts of number 10 that's not matching up with the graph you want me to go over? Okay. So why is there a slant asymptote in number 10? Uh, because uh, the degree on top is one more than the degree on the bottom. Good. Now, one thing that's optional here is since there's no x squareds, you can say plus zero x squareds if that makes it easier for you. It's not necessary, but. Okay, so you set it up like this. Yes? Okay, what is the first part of your quotient going to be then? Okay, that's good because that gives you this. Then negative one fourth x times four x would be negative one x squared. Since these are x's and these are x squares, I just choose not to line them up. And then negative one fourth x times twenty four would be negative six x. Okay. And then if you change the signs and combine like terms. You have an x squared and a minus 10x. Are we still the same there? Okay, well these are like terms, so I combined them together, and then this didn't have anything else to combine with, so it just carried down. These added to zero. Now, you may not have lined them up the same way as me, but it's still gonna work out the same way. You're taking all of this stuff plus all of this stuff after you change the signs. Just combining like terms. So the next part would need to be negative four. Oh, negative one fourth to get you an x squared. Okay, but all that becomes a remainder anyway. So I would say for the slant asymptote, it would need to be y equals, that's correct. Now, again, I know you don't always have a calculator. You can't count on a calculator in the quiz or the test. But one nice thing that you guys need to consider is if you already have this graphed in your calculator for some other reason, graph the slant asymptote as well. Is this what we got for slant asymptote? Yes. Okay, and what you should see is that it fits in this slant perfectly. And it's a little hard to see when you're just going negative five to five, negative five to five. But if you change it from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, which is more than we're graphing, you're gonna see that this slant asymptote is just like, just slides into this slides into this little slant perfectly.
so when you have a calculator like the ACT, that's a good way to quickly check your plan asymptote work. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about with this red line? And then like a couple questions ago, you can cross a slant asymptote or a horizontal asymptote, just like right here, as long as it's not at the far left or far right of the graph. It needs to be in the middle. Okay, has anybody got another part of this one they'd like to see worked out? Okay, then I will share my graph to number 11. So you need to end up with the same thing as me for number 11. And I will leave that up on the board here for a bit. I just never heard of smoking. 
Bro. You gotta give me some slides. The first time I read that word was first word. Oh. I like playing it in real life. I like it. I had them Jesus Christ. That's how it is. There's so many writers on the world taking the ice rare. Yes. 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 Like, we all learned Spanish as a kid alongside English. At the same time? Yeah. Why? Because? I mean, I think it's good to know, but like, at the same time, I feel like they're just calling Well, yeah, or else we'll have a disadvantage on either one. Wouldn't that give you a disadvantage in those? No. Because you, like, wouldn't know them as, uh, like, you wouldn't well, know Well, you know both of those equally. Yeah, it's equally, but when and then you if you learn if you learn English and if you speak English more like I did, then you have less Spanish whenever when you speak worse on Spanish and either or, you know? Are you, you good Spanish? Yeah, I am. Are you fluent in Spanish? Yeah. I, I, I can translate stuff. So is Spanish really easy? Yeah. I, I just the thing is that like I, I, I'm I'm not the best at speaking in Spanish. And just, I don't know exactly how to spell some words. I just kind of go based off of like the, how, what how it should, what you think it should be? Huh? Like what you think it should be? But that's yeah, well, based on like the verbal pronunciation of the rest of the And, yeah, it's just also just grammar rules. Like I, when someone speaks to me in Spanish, I understand. I can say like what they're saying. I'm assuming that one's okay. Yep. Okay, I'm switching the graph from number 11 to number 12. So if you don't have your own calculator to check your work today, Make sure you're ending up with the graph that looks like that. What did you get for the slide? Can you say? It's just one fourth X. One fourth X? Yeah. No, I just did it. I got a negative one fourth X for everything. Oh, wait, yeah, I got negative one for X minus one. Oh, yeah, negative one for X. No, it cancels out. Negative one for X. Yeah, because that cancels with that. Isn't it? Yeah. Negative one for X. 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 Negative yeah, you would get minus two X. 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 Yeah, you like, could you please comment on Cole's post on Instagram? Maybe say like bad caption or like or like city boy. I don't know. He hates that. I don't really. I don't know. When you're finished, I'll help you think of something. But. 
Wait, I only have two more. I don't know what we're saying. Like, like, if you say, I don't give a crap, then, but like, if you say that to someone, that means you're acknowledging them and like that they're speaking. So, would you technically give a crap? Well, it depends on what you're saying. Are you saying you don't give a crap about them or you don't care about give a crap about what they're saying? So you can acknowledge what they've said but not care about it. I guess. But like, I care about the content of it. Now, if you're saying, I don't care that you said that, then that would probably be. That was a sticky situation. Hold on. Oh, I did. Give me a sec. I know you're suffering from success. How do you go to bed at night? You're, just, you're so funny. Like, how would you have to stay awake laughing? I do go to bed at night. Yeah. 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 Like, I fucking hate getting out of Sorry. That was so random. But about to sleep. But it, it only started like this week. It will be out at like, at least on, like six. Every morning, like without fail, at six o'clock, it just starts meowing for no reason. There's nothing I can do for it to stop. It just like has to stop on its own. And I'll open my door. Sometimes it'll be at my door and I. And it never likes me either. I open my door and it'll run into my room and jump up on my bed, sit there for like five seconds, and then run back out. And just what is this? What is this? My cat. Oh. I'm like, stop. Bro, I've had a guano with me sick. I've been able to have it on my shoulder, like kind of wrapped around a little bit. Like, wouldn't that be cool? Huh? No, no, like a guano. That's like the average UK drill track. <laughs> I spice using a UK drill rap while talking a little bit faster than usual over it. About like curving a baddie. <laughs> Bro, she looks like Annie. And she was never adopted by by Annie. She was in like a brothel. Oh my god. That's horrible. I spice with Annie in a brothel. That's not a brothel. Am I wrong? A few factor 13. Like all the things. Yeah. 
Your birthday sucks. Mine's at least in spring break. <laughs> Like, do you, do you change the sign if it's like negative as part of the answer? I don't understand that question. Can you show me like the, can you help me with like the long division for 11? No, I'll come up, you can bring it up here and I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. I tried to help you earlier. You weren't paying attention. Sorry. Like, I got the negative 1 for x. So it'll, like, cancel out the x squared. But, like, would that make this, it would, would it still be a plus if it was, like, a negative? Or would you still change the sign? We did this one together on the board. Your plus 1 is what's wrong. Oh. I don't know what you're looking at me for. I wasn't looking at you, I was trying to look behind you. You see there? Oh, she's not there. She's over there. I mean, it's oh. so fast, dude. I just heard Jay go like that. Just close the room right there. I don't know. 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 Oh, okay. My bad. I, this is not what we did. It's good. I don't know why there's a bunch of negative one fourth x in like the. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I didn't make up the question. So, so like, for like the two x, would it, would I change the sign or would I not? This would be minus two x. Change the sign to add, so it now becomes four x. Okay, so I, I was just wondering if I was doing that, and then I would just do minus one. Then I don't know. I can't see. Sorry. Here's something else. Um, yeah, plus one, okay. I don't think it would be plus one. I think it would be minus one to keep the sign as a negative. To be yeah, okay. Okay. You wrote yeah, sorry, I, I wrote that in like the thing. My bad. So I was, I was graphing the function here. Uh -huh. So here's the slant acid. Yeah. yeah. So you're probably right. It looks like a minus. Yeah. But then if you just graph... If we graph what you think the sine asymptote is, that line should just squeeze right in there. And then it's going to know your sine asymptote. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I was just confused on that. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. That would be an art show. Yeah, that's the only thing. You want to see my video a bit? I I got it would be like a really like so I guess it wasn't. That's great. Yeah, I was like, I should be doing that on purpose. I thought that was on the screen. Is this okay? I mean, I watched. I still look big. This one was really far behind. Yeah, I watched like two legs. It was, you know, just. I mean, this one is nice. It's more convenient than that. I was trying to figure out how how to use it next year. I mean, I think that really cool. That screen's big enough to where I don't know if I'm really zoomed in at all, but a couple years from now, they're going to stop buying those. They're going to buying both. They're going to have to use those only. Is that something serious? Why? I'm not saying right now. I don't know if the district wants us to use those. Are they cheaper? Or? They're probably not cheaper, but they probably can't afford to. Those bulbs are like hundreds of dollars. So they probably can't afford to be doing that and buy all these things that way. So like they can afford to buy all the food, they just don't have my nose. So first thing, should we go around and pop and get Yes, that'd be nice. Pop and roll, break and roll. I mean, I guess if you want to be a large week, you brought a new shoe and you want to... The little bit of a Christian, it's not like those cameras in the store. Yeah, that's what I want.
Yeah, if y'all only knew like how many emails we get a, a day just saying like recognize these people, like people just doing stuff on camera. Yes. Okay. If y'all did not finish up the rest of those, that's what you need to do for homework between now and Wednesday. This is a B week, so I will only see you on Wednesday again this week. Are we turning this in? Yeah, we're turning most things. Okay. Is there a classroom oh. sign that you just experienced ago? Not yet, no. Is there one for this yet? No, there's not. Okay. Am I, I'll consider doing it tomorrow. Cool. My B day is two days behind y'all, so like, I'm just not doing it very well. So basically, so that I just like, okay, we're gonna find this way down there. Oh my god, no, 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 no,
Yeah, like, they're probably like freaking out because they don't have anything to eat. Like, I think it's like $20,000 every day to go to the bank. I mean, it's me, it's Corey, all the time. It's so much fun to do. It's so good. It is. It's so good. 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 to do anything else for your binder. <laughs> well, I use the rings. Okay, so then you open your binder, <laughs> you put it in, and then you close your binder. Yeah, but I have so many papers already in, like, the, the folder part of the binders. So the mistake was is that you didn't put them where you were supposed to, right? <laughs> what? If you just kept putting them back there, then it would have been easy to keep up with. Well, it's just easier to flip through them back there. Yeah, but then, but then you get that problem. Like I put the numbers in, I put the numbers in, and like I use the numbers. It's just, it's just way, it's just way more simple to just hold punch. I do the same thing in calculus. So if you get stuck with me in calculus, I think you should probably put them in the three ring binder yeah. instead of on top of each other, or you're gonna have a book that you can't find anything. I, I know that's why I put everything from this semester into the three three ring part. I use the hole puncher. It's just, I, I almost forgot to use the whole puncher, and then I would have just had to put it in the binder or like in my backpack. I guess. I was proud. 